Hola Barcelona, and welcome to this talk about Heredown, which is a great microservice framework for the cloud world. I really would like to be there in Barcelona right now because it was a dream for me to speak at JPNC Conf. Unfortunately, this time it was like um, not possible because of this coronavirus stuff, but at least virtually I'm with you. By the way, here we have a really, really, uh, I would say Spanish heat. That means it's over like 36 centigrade as far as I see on my phone. So we are experiencing the same emotions for that. Okay, so let us start. So second slide, we will pass. My name is Mitri Alexandrov. I'm a software developer at Oracle. So this is my mail. This is my tweet handle. So whenever you have any questions, uh, please let me know or tweet me or write me or just find a way to, to meet me. I'm, I'm in all social networks. So let us talk about how it done. So uh, as I said, it's a framework, but we actually don't say a framework to ourselves. We call ourselves self-libraries with our microservices since mm -hmm. Helidon is not exactly a framework. So uh, it's really like, uh, well, it, it does not give you, it puts you into, into some frame. It gives you the abilities to create microservices. So that's why we call ourselves uh, this uh, set of libraries. Most of them are like independent. And you can find more information about Helion uh, on Helion.io. So it's uh, a good starting point. You would wonder what actually Helion means. And here is the answer to the question. So it means a swallow. So this wonderful bird, which flies like, uh, it's very maneuverable, very fast and very, very everything. And the way they fly in this flock that reminds us of the microservices world. And uh, I really enjoy it. So the name is really, I would say, correctly said. And um, the good part of it, or one of the best parts of it, is that, uh, well, uh, it's very special to Oracle because uh, this uh, product is an uh, open source under Apache 2.0 license. So nothing is hidden. Everything is on our GitHub. All the issues, all the code, all the pro requests, everything is there. So if you want to be part of it, so create a, we're trying to create a community now. We have a great, great community, which is actually like forming right now. So if you, if you want to be part of it, just go to GitHub plus slash Oracle slash Halidon, and we do accept PRs. So why is it so cool? Because most of the, well, the biggest foundation is actually that we build on top of Netty. So we're fully asynchronous and very, very fast. <coughs> And of course, as my talk says, like in cloud environments, so we are cloud ready from the very, very beginning. That means that we do have everything to run more microservices in the cloud. So out of the box, you get not only REST, but you get health metric tracing, everything you need to run in the clouds. And one of the uh, coolest features that we do support with a lot of, uh, um, I would say, um, focus, I would say, is the uh, Graviant native image support. This Graviant native image support, we have more than 100%, 100, 99% of, of uh, support. That means that all, practically all of our code is Graviant native image friendly, which is kind of awesome. And we really tend to do this because, like many frameworks, are, frameworks are just coming to Graviant, they already do support it. And one of the features that we have to be aware. Yeah, for somebody this may be advantage for or for other it may be a disadvantage, but we find it's a cool advantage because we are in the new age. That means that we are Java plus nine world, actually even post Java eleven world. That means that uh, we enjoy all all the benefits of the newest Java. So we are modular, we are enjoying new features, we are faster, and we are built on top of it. So just bear in mind whenever you have uh, something to do with Helidon. It is uh, necessary for you to know about. So let us have a look actually about uh, what Helidon is in terms of architecture. So as I said, we've got Netty underneath, and this Netty is actually uh, serving everything for us. Uh, so it's our foundation. But to make everything really, really uh, native, we have built the top of uh, where so we call it Helidon Reactive or Helidon SE. Uh, this means that it does support all this metrics, uh, health, and everything you need for the clouds in a pure Java reactive way. We will talk about it a little bit later. And of course, uh, so framework, you know, we won't, don't want to be like a, 
a very closed ecosystem. That's why we've chosen to be part of a micro profile. And that's why the most cases uh, for you can be solved in a micro profile way. So let us actually take a look at it. So uh, let's have a look at the Heridon MP. So first of all, for those who don't know, I'm pretty much sure that there in Barcelona, you, everybody knows about micro profile, but if somebody watching this uh, uh, from uh, uh, other countries, maybe you're not familiar, so just a few words about it. So micro profile is like, I'll just read it, open source community specification for enterprise job microservices. And the main idea is that uh, actually it was born in our eyes. It's, it's very fresh, I would say. So several several um, vendors sat together on one table and said, guys, we have to create a specification which is portable, which is uh, small, and which is which defines the way our microservices actually work. And uh, those participants are now Oracle, IBM, and Hyperarch, Tommy Tribe, of course, and even Microsoft. They are also great, great participants there as well. Uh, and uh, they all sat together on one table and said, we will create this open source community specification. And they actually did it. And uh, actually, it's now developed uh, with really high cadence, like four releases per year. More information if you find my profile IO. And once again, the main idea is that you are, this is not the code, this is not the implementation. This is a specification, and every vendor has to implement it. So. Uh, Oracle has its own implementation, Pair has its own implementation, same as uh, for Tom Tribe. We have our own implementation, and let us actually see what we have. So first of all, uh, currently my micro profile is at version 4.0, as far as I know. And uh, um, uh, there are like 12 main, I would say, core specifications that we uh, that actually used to serve you in this uh, microservices cloud world. So we have everything for the tracing because uh, we can have like requests from, from many, many services and any one request can go from many different services. So because everything is distributed at fault tolerance, you got API description and API description of API 2.0. Uh, we can consume data with REST client. We have security and health checks for everything. We gather metrics with all the specification. And of course, to rule them all is the CDI, which provides us the injection and JSONP and Jux REST to serve. Actually, this CDI, JSONP, and Jux REST were the first three specifications. And now there are 12 main specifications. And let's actually see what you get out of the box when you, when you, when you use. Um, Held on. So we first of all get all this micro profile specification, uh, and not only. So you also have this Jakarta E specification. So uh, you got more than just micro profile. So you have this persistence, transactions, annotation, web socket, everything is there. And you got something like additional specifications for micro profile, which are not exactly part of of uh, of on right now. I'm not held on the micro profile, the, the, the specification developed, but they're not core specifications like GraphQL. And because we have a big demand of, uh, of users uh, for um, cores and gRPC, we also have included this in, uh, implementations uh, to our um, Helidon. And we are proud of one very, very special thing is that uh, our CDI support is not partial. It is full support. That means that we have a wealth there, which is uh, like fully full support implementation for CDI. And it works in uh, native image world as well. So we've done some chemistry there. And we do support it both in uh, in um, Java world and both in Wavia world. So we are really proud of it and we may use it in both of these worlds. So just give it a try. And for actually coding, because I want to do some coding with you today, um, uh, we will also see uh, the Haridon SE part. So what is actually Haridon SE? If you remember this wonderful picture with Haridon um, Reactive and Haridon Microprofile and Petty there, Haridon Reactive stays like a little bit in the, in the, in the middle. And uh, actually, uh, this is once again the foundation for the micro profile implementation. And it has a wonderful feature, which is uh, it is uh, 
pure Java and pure reactive Java. So what do we have here? So most of these components, you actually know them already because you have like core components and we have this uh, configuration, security, health check, tracing, metrics, uh, which is awesome. And uh, this actually serves to like a profile as well. But we have more than that. So we also have our wonderful DB client. And this DB client is just perfect because it is like uh, solving us the problems of uh, uh, asynchronous communication to any database because you know, microservices don't live in, in any world without, without persistence. So this is okay. Few of them are like, living like this. And we are solving this problem as creating a special rocker driver which can actually run your even synchronous driver in an asynchronous way. So we will cut the same is exactly for the web client actually, because uh, we know that uh, web clients, so, so web services not only produce data, they also consume the data. And this is actually wonderful because then you have a way to, uh, to create fully asynchronous communication, not just Part of it because you can't make part partial um, uh, you know, uh, reactive communication. Okay, everything is, is is reactive here. And as I say, reactive, we are really really proud of the fact that we have uh, our own implementation of reactive messaging and reactive streams. So actually, uh, reactive stuff there in Helidon because um, we don't need to uh, run any external projects like React or Rx Java. But uh, we have own implementation out of the box, and this implementation is uh, made and uh, created by David Carnick himself. So the creator, the father of React, uh, he also contributed to Project Helidon. So we are really proud of it. So what is the difference actually? You would say so. Uh, if you take a look at the Helidon MP, you will see that uh, you have uh, a very typical way of writing microservices. So you specify several annotations. Uh, like uh, path and get and whatever it is, and it suddenly starts working. Uh, these annotations are standard. They are provided from MicroProfile. That makes your code portable. But if you go to your left, actually, you will see the same, actually the same code, but written in pure Java in a reactive way. So, uh, uh, as you probably see, we're using a lot of build patterns here, and this build pattern is currently quite awesome, quite awesome. So uh, you just uh, describe your routing. You just analyze what function you have to to associate to any of the endpoints, and it works. You know the same code, it's absolutely the same, but with totally different speed. Uh, well, actually, just a few words about it. More, uh, the main idea of Helidon is really to uh, it, it, it's not a, it's not a portable solution, but it provides you a way if you have a very very um, um, I would say under pressure microservices, and you really don't want to get all the magic that profile provides you, you can do it with Helidon SE, which is pure Java, which is very, very much debuggable. And uh, um, this gives you really quite, quite super polish. That's why we sometimes call Helidon SE like the danger zone, because uh, it gives you a full power and a lot of responsibility, of course, as it said in the so let us actually code a little bit. So how can we code in, uh, with uh, with Helidon? So uh, first of all, uh, we are Maven oriented. So there's an archetype for that. So you just use this archetype uh, and uh, include some, some, some annotations. Uh, so there's a parents annotation for everything and then the version control is there and some dependencies. So the micro profile is everything you need to start working. Uh, there's another way to start building with, uh, with the Helidon is just go to the microservice title page and there uh, you just uh, generate and choose the correct runtime, the best runtime, which is Helidon. And there you go. But we said and uh, thought that our, our, our customers deserve more. And that's why we have created so called uh, CLI, so or Helidon CLI application. Which is a common line application to help you generate, run, and actually care for your project as much as possible. So this is the demo part, and let us actually do. 
So uh, as you see, there is an empty empty folder, and we will just go and create a project. As you see, uh, the application, which can be uh, downloaded from our website, so it's supported for all the platforms, including Windows already. So just Linux, Mac OS, or Windows, just download the app. Uh, I think it's available in uh, most of the package managers so far. And just download it and type it on in it. And there, like in childhood, you have to answer a few questions. So the first question is what flavor we want, SASE or MP? Because like you know, we want to create a portable microprocessor solution or a very powerful microprocessor solution. And this time we will create a portable solution, which is much more familiar. And we will create so-called quick start project that includes multiple operations just for demonstration purposes. Uh, some questions like name, group, artifact ID, version, everything you need. We'll just leave it as it is because it's enough. And uh, another thing is, uh, do we want to start a development group? Well, for now, I will say no, but I will show you uh, that we will need a little bit later. So if you go and say that, uh, that this is the quick start application, so let's have a problem. It is just a regular Maven, I would say, uh, structure with some Java files, with some XML files, and more. And let us open it in our favorite uh, EDE. And we'll create some ingredients for this together. With the, actually, it's already created, but we will uh, actually demonstrate it and make it run. So uh, we definitely need some time for, for um, uh, the idea to get loaded. So sometimes idea don't be good enough with uh, uh, yes uh, with uh, uh, instruments like OBS Studios and so on and so on. And uh, this is exactly the situation. Let us let us actually open it again because I don't like the way it shows us. So idea. Oh, much better now. Yes, yeah, sometimes OBS makes these issues. Lovely. So what do we have here? So we have uh, a structure that we have, and we have like a gradient provider. So this is an application scope theme, which actually generates us messages. Some of them they read from the configuration, and some they just set. And then we have the resource. So for those of you who are familiar with profile, we get the scope very familiar, so we get path, we get the scope, you inject some of the services, and then you just uh, do some getter setters, and more than that, we even have a demonstration for open API stuff, which is available to you as well from the endpoint, and you can generate documentation, or actually not documentation, but like you know, to generate a document to just like a, uh, documented uh, documented representation of your API. So and actually, this is it. This is all you need to run the application. So that's why, well, let us just go to uh, the the, uh, the console. And we're going to use Open Bridges Maven to install, no forget, but we're going to do better. We're going to do like Caligon Dev, which will start so-called development loop mode. So what is that? It means that, uh, well, sometimes you have to download some artifacts, but it's okay. Uh, that means that uh, it will build everything for us, uh, like uh, generate the code, make a baby build, make all the dependencies uh, uh, all run together, and it will run as a jar. So you will see, just in fractions of a second, uh, our application is running, and let us let us use some terminal to call some curls to see if it's working. So we'll call NTIT go eat. And what we have here, hello world, awesome. And uh, this is okay. We can do like read J, B, and C. And we'll say how about J, B, and C. But let us actually change something. We don't want to make it. It's, uh, it's very obvious. We will say hola. Which is, I hope, uh, the right way to say it in Spanish, and that's why if it so uh, it recognized 
uh, the loop for us. It reloaded it for us. So let me just check if it actually did it. And let us start and say it again. Yes, wonderful. So you see in fractions of a second, I even did not recognize it myself that uh, it just just opened it and run it. And uh, now we have uh, all IJ BNC. So this is a good thing. We also can change, can change uh, the code and it will recognize it. And this is it. So basically the ED is just part of the process. And uh, the coolest part that not always you need the not always you even have to know the main domain structure for you to make it run because for example if you're migrating from different world like like uh, I don't know Node.js or PHP Helidon is there to help you with that and uh, Helidon is there to ease your way and you see how fast it actually started in fractions of a second if you run it in the the ASCII mode also the ASCII project will start even faster and it will have uh, absolutely the same functionality, but unfortunately we are limited in time. So uh, as we are limited in time, let's actually uh, go uh, to the slides again. Okay, and here now actually I come to my next thing I want to show you, and this next thing is called Verrazano. So what is actually Verrazano? So as you see here, you see a bunch of really familiar uh, pictures to you. Uh, logos actually to you so it's a, once again a big collection of uh, well-known technologies and something uh, which is already um, created or some new stuff written in Oracle which is like an enterprise container platform so it helps you run your applications whether they are Helidon or Spring or uh, even Micronaut or written in Java, Python, Node, Proby, whatever it is uh, into Kubernetes clouds so that means that uh, you just run your code and then you have a, a wonderful set of already pre-configured technologies for you, uh, which gather the information, monitor your services, and um, um, provide um, authorization and authentication to you. So uh, what actually is uh, Verizon used for? So workload managing across environments. So, well, uh, what is the values that actually Verizon brings to you? First of all, it gives you like automation. So we have created our service in uh, in Helidon, and now we want to to deploy it. And actually, here Verizon is a great uh, help for us because Helidon is like a first class citizen there. Only with some YAM file, you can easily upload your uh, not upload, but actually deploy your service in uh, in the Verizon in Kubernetes clusters. So it gives you the, uh, it actually uh, set up the security for you. It cares for the application lifecycle of the application. And um, so it has a, pre-wires a lot of uh, stuff like for observability, like metric tracing, all of that stuff for you. And if you're running your application in multiple clouds, so it cares for your infrastructure. Let us see actually the, 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 the possibilities where you can use Verizano. So once again, it cares for the DevOps. That means that automated deployment, uh, it cares, it wires your services to uh, observability stuff like Grafana, Prometheus, Kibana, Elasticsearch, all of that stuff. Uh, it also cares for security, so whenever you need some communication, password management, all of that stuff, it comes to you automatically. Uh, and um, once again, application lifecycle, so it cares for everything for you. But for example, if you want to have not only one, but different like polygon environment with some application running on Spring, with some application running on WebLogic, and some application running on, on, on uh, of course, Helidon, best choice. Uh, Verizon is there to help you do this. That means that it wires everything to Grafana, Prometheus, Kibana. Of course, provides Lightning Search. And if you like have communication between the services, it cares for security like mutual TLS, uh, which is handled automatically for you. Uh, more complicated solution is, uh, of course, running in uh, multiple Kubernetes environments. That means that uh, one Verizon Kubernetes cluster can care for application running on, uh, on different uh, Kubernetes clusters. And even more than that, so for example, if we have like different clusters that they are allowed, we can create a separate management cluster, administration cluster uh, for, for Verizano. 
and it will just run all the applications for us and gather all the information and serve it to us in a better, best way. Of course, you can also run in multiple clouds. That means you can run some of your application in one cloud, other application in other clouds. And so uh, what's the actually the news uh, that come uh, earlier this year that previously uh, Verizona has its own application mode on for which was pretty good, by the way. But now we join the community of uh, other big vendors uh, like uh, Alibaba, like uh, AWS, like Google, of course, Microsoft. And we have now uh, have uh, our common, so open application model uh, for, for our deployments. So um, once again, more information about that you can find by usual search. So uh, actually, the other part. So let us actually run the same application that we did uh, in uh, um, a Verizon Earth. So that's why I have created uh, an Oracle Cloud, an Oracle Cloud you see very easy, a Kubernetes cluster with Verizon installed. The subject of this installment is like, well, um, uh, it's uh, complicated because uh, it will take you some time. But funny thing is that uh, whenever you actually have um, uh, this instruction, you just follow it and it will work. I guarantee I just did it like a few minutes ago before this presentation. So what do we have here actually? So uh, as you see, we already have our Verizon console. Yeah, we have a bunch of other stuff running uh, uh, of our application. So I actually already did the deployment, uh, but let us actually try it. So HTTPS is like Yes, this is the Verizon end console. So it asks us for some uh, some credentials. And here from the console, by the way, take a look at this awesome console. So you just has to be you have to be on um, a website. You don't have to be in common line to get all the uh, information that you need. So let us actually get the secret. So the secret is somewhere here. Uh, I have hidden it, uh, and uh, I think I will get it right now. This is the secret. Uh, so we will just get the password that we can use. So I will use this password right now, but uh, at the moment when you watch the video, it will be deleted. So we'll just go to the uh, Zalo. This is the username. And we sign in. And what we have, this is the Verizon console. Uh, it has to be, like here we have all the metrics information that we have. And let us see what is the application. So this is the same application used for greeting purposes. So we will just type in the URL. And what do we have here? We have Hello JPNC, the very same application running in the clouds. So what do we have here from out of the box as we deploy this application? Of course, well, we have Grafana. Yes. So Grafana is here, and what we have here is some monitoring solutions. So once again, out of the box, when you deploy the Helio app, you get this wonderful dashboard set where we have like heap sizes, uptimes, everything, everything, uh, and we have our metrics gathered here. So once again, Oracle Cloud is just wonderful. You have this awesome console where you can just, you don't need really to to just take one browser to do this. Uh, and then you have the dashboard, and then you have the Verizon console. So, as you see, this is just wonderful. And uh, once again, um, if you want to learn more about Helion, as, as I already said, Helion.io is the place for you to start whenever you like to read. Uh, we have long reads in our medium official account. And then we have this Oracle. Um, account on GitHub and we have Helidon, so it's a project you place your license, just use it. Uh, Helidon project uh, is our official Git handle. We have videos coming to you quite often with demonstration of the technologies that are available right now. And of course, if you want to use uh, to ask questions, helidon.slack.com is the place for you to do this, although you can also tweet about it. Uh, if you want to learn more about Verizona, uh, so verizona.io is a place for you. Of course, it has our uh, has its own uh, uh, Twitter handle, GitHub account, YouTube channel, and of course uh, Slack to ask your questions. 
So uh, with this, I just want to thank you for, for your interest in this technology. I hope you find it useful. We are really limited in time. But uh, thankfully, uh, this was just a small demo. Contact me uh, on the questions that you uh, find, or maybe if you find a good solution for your uh, usage in your product of Helidon and Verizon, just let us know. We are there to help you. Uh, just a small um, interesting thing that we are now also supporting Kotlin. So if you want to write in Kotlin, you can do this. Thank you so much. Um, enjoy your wonderful summer in, in Barcelona, and bye-bye.